<laughs> there's, yeah. um, mm. there's a few TikToks that you've made that have oh gone God. viral. Yeah. And I, I hate my TikTok. I love them. I hate my TikTok. It's so messy. <laughs> it's, so it's so much going on. There's like so me, addictive. It's actually. so addictive and I'm so ratchet on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I send them to my uh, partner. I'm like, see? <laughs> <laughs> my mum sends them around to people. Can you believe oh, that? Yeah, wow, bless yeah. her. Yeah. I heard um, yeah. one of the things that you said in one of your podcasts, your yeah. mum is the one that... Yeah. Got you online. Absolutely. She she forced me, uh, originally she forced me to become a psychology teacher because she just said, I, I, I teach well. And she forced me to go down that route. And then she got sick of kind of like seeing my potential like in because she would see me like do speeches on weddings and like just in conversations she she watches me all the time and she'd be like why aren't you on a stage why did, go on a stage go online go online every day go online and then uh, she forced me you really really forced me and then it just went from there so yeah I do owe her a lot of credit for that that's amazing thank you Sadi's mom. You, mom I hope you're I watching I love you this. so much I miss her really at we the really moment. appreciate your I help. really miss her I haven't seen I'm actually a bit upset with her because she's supposed to come out to Dubai and she hasn't come yet and she keeps saying she'll book her ticket it's okay we forgive you no we don't <laughs> call me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um you did one of these TikToks about why are hot women psychos or crazy yeah why are hot girls crazy I love that video yeah <laughs> yeah right well I, well, I see, I always say this. It's like um, two women have completely different experiences of the same man. We could meet the same man and you have a completely different experience to what I would have of him. And you, I might have a completely different experience of how you have it. And with hot girls, they get the worst version of men. They really get the worst ver version of men. Again, the men in the comments, oh, you're blaming us. But here's what it is. Men like sex. They like pretty women. So when they see a pretty girl and a hot girl, they can't help but become a guy that's trying to conquer her, or try, they're trying to get her. And he'll risk it all. If he's married, he doesn't care. If it's at the gym, he doesn't care. If it's at work, he'll cross the work boundaries. They lose their sense of professionalism or their sense of like loyalty just to kind of get an access to her. So she starts to go through life thinking, men are trash. This guy had a girlfriend. This guy was married. That guy's my boss. And he still moved to me. I still tried to be, my London comes out here. <laughs> he still tried to get to me. So she starts to see men as creatures who can't control their sexual urges. Whereas you take a basic or plain Jane, she can be in a bikini next to a guy and he doesn't even notice her. And so she thinks men are, they're, they're, in, they're fine, they're sufferable, they don't do anything. So she's far more like, oh yeah, go on a lad's hole all day. Oh, you can go Ibiza, oh, you can do this, no worries, blah, blah. Whereas a girl that's on the receiving end of going to Ibiza and the guy saying, go on my table today or you're not leaving or, or taking you to the top tables and stuff, she's watching you every time you go out on a night out. Do you think like a lot of the hot girls, um, you know, that are available in this market now, um, most of them have become like sugar babies? I think so. I think if you come from a broken home, especially if you don't have a family uh, background, um, and I do understand that this is no judgment, but when you don't have a, a home um, with one parent missing, what happens then you don't have accountability to two people. And you just do what you've got to do to make ends meet. Sometimes you don't even need to make ends meet, but it becomes addictive. When you, when you, it's so easy, right? When you divorce sex from any emotion and you see it as an activity, why not get paid for that activity? And so this is what culture has done. It's slowly and steadily taken women to this point. First thing was to create the idea of sex before marriage. Then it was the idea of a spontaneous sex. Then it was the idea of one night stands. Then it's now the idea of why are you doing one night stands? Get paid for it. If you don't care about the guy, you're never going to see him again. Why would you waste your body? Might as well make money. So society has conditioned us to get more and more provocative. But hasn't prostitution, isn't prostitution the oldest business in the world? It was for people who were desperate. Now it's for people who just want to get their nails done. Wow. I mean, you know, one thing I've seen since I've come to Dubai is the sugar baby lifestyle yeah, here. Yeah, it's so real. It's so, like, I'd always see, like, YouTube videos no, about it. No, you'll see it now, like, when you go to Starbucks, you'll see yeah, the sugar yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'd always watch, like, a YouTube video. I'm a sugar baby, and yeah, this is yeah. what I got. And I thought it was some hidden thing, and I was like, oh, I wonder what it's like. Now it's just it's like, like, oh, she's right there. <laughs> yeah, just ask her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and mm. um, it's it's so glorified here. Well, it's or here somewhere. or around the world. Forget yeah, here. I, I don't think, think it's think in it every is. big city, even Miami. But this is in cultures where you minimize the emotional attachment to sex and men. This is another thing men are delusional about. They think women have, uh, can't uh, have sex with that emotion. Yes, they can. How do you think prostitutes have done it their whole lives? They can when they decide to make monetize it. 
Well, I feel like it affects women on because I've I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson. Shout yeah. out to JP. Absolutely love <laughs> Man <you>. like JP. <laughs> <laughs> Man like <Yeah. laughs> um, mm-hmm. and he, he's he spoke a lot about um women and you you know, sexual attachment and stuff. Yeah. Um and I feel like women that are in that industry or they're in that space, they have more higher chance of like suicide or Absolutely. depression. And men and women. Here's the thing, we, we've gotten so used to the idea that men and women are different when it comes to sex and men can have sex with everybody and anyone and women can have sex with just one man and all, you know. It, it, but here's the thing, it's psychological for both people. Ask men who cheat, they're usually going through an ego boost. They need an ego boost or they feel unappreciated by their wife or they've just lost their job and they need an escapism. It's psychological. If it was biological, they'd have sex with their wife all day, every day, but they don't. So it's a case of it's, there's an escapism. There's some psychological escapism. Now, for women who do it, it's definitely a sense of she's met people who have used her body so many times against her will that now she's trying to take back control. There's a reason why sex abuse leads to prostitution at a really high rate. They find that sex workers, I'm sure it's different now, because, but the last time they looked at the data before it became glorified, sex workers have a real history of childhood abuse and what happens is when you've been abused or molested as a child, you, the control has been taken out of your hands. Somebody's accessed your body and violated it without your permission. So to reestablish control, the person who's been a victim starts to then sell their body and say, you can only access me uh, on my terms now. And it's a form of regaining control. But until you undo the trauma, it's going to happen again and again. Wow. So yeah, is, uh, how do we get from sugar babies to uh, this? I'm it, so sorry. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, fine, but it's there fine. is an element of that. Yeah, I would imagine they were violated at some point. And I actually think it doesn't even need a violation. I actually think it's the culture of losing your virginity at a young age. Really? Yeah. I think that the reason why we have so many sugar babies now and so much is they lost their virginity at a young age. I used to be a teacher. So for I would have Monday mornings of girls coming into my office and being like, oh, miss, I need to get an abortion quickly. And oh, this uh, awful stuff like this. And uh, they would lose their virginity at such a young age. And the advent of Snapchat meant that 11-year-olds were sending nudes. And it's like, 11, sending nudes? What are you talking? I didn't even know what that, that was a thing. But when you do that at such a young age, there's no way you don't experience shame and guilt. Impossible. Because nobody looks at losing their virginity at 12, 13 years old and thinking, yeah, that was a good idea. So to reestablish control over that experience is to then monetize sex and make sex feel like it's just a job. And then you don't feel so guilty and ashamed of what you did when you were young. So do you think that's where OnlyFans comes Abs- in? There's I a lot would, of young girls in there. I now. would highly I would be I would love to do a study on this, but OnlyFans girls. Please do I it. would love to yeah, I would love to. Who wants to fund me? I would love to do that. <laughs> where it's um OnlyFans girls, I can imagine they lost their virginity either non consensually or too young when you, I don't believe it can be consensual when you're young. It, How young is too young now? Uh, any well the thing is if it, uh, maybe because i worked with kids and i see their kids they're so so small so even 15 16 which is a legal age they're kids there's no decision you can make at 16 and still s- make the same decision at 30 so it's too young yeah but i could argue that like someone in a village of pakistan she's got married at 16 and she's it, but yeah. she didn't lose her virginity somebody invested in her there's a self-esteem attached to that Somebody's taking the time to marry you and invest in you and you're having a whole courtship and there's a wedding and there's all, and there's a meher, um, a dowry. Um, so there's no l- lack of self-esteem. But a 15-year-old who's been having had sex in the back of a park by a guy that she just wanted him to like her more, and it's not really because she loves him, there's a completely different la- uh, self-worth that comes attached to that. Interesting. And it's the culture. And, you know, when I was... Uh, a teacher it would shock me that parents would be like oh yeah so and so is just staying at her boyfriend's house this weekend and they'd be 14 15 years old and i'd be like come on janet <laughs> you can be stricter than that babes <laughs> what's going on um because they would literally be like oh she's staying with her boyfriend or going on holiday with her boyfriend. and they're like 16 15 years old they're too young i think i'd have a panic attack i would kill yeah well, i shouldn't say that but i would literally be beside myself if that yeah, was the case yeah, 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 yeah i would literally be beside myself because it's just too young they can't even do their homework on time and you think they should know what their sexual partner should look like yeah 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 100 percent. i think if i had kids now um oh, you wouldn't be able to i stopped teaching because of it because of the culture in the schools it's just too it's too traumatizing for me to watch yeah 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 
Yeah, I agree with you. I think that when it comes to like men investing into women in those villages, they probably feel huge investment. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, you're saving them from poverty a lot of the time. Like they might be from families where I'm not saying it's perfect, but the se- what it does to a woman's self worth is completely different. So yes, yeah, she might be poor and then she gets married at 15 years old, but there's a whole shebang. You know, there's a whole ceremony. It's uh, you know, parents are like giving her away. Um, you feel it, it, like you feel like a woman. They make you feel like a woman, but there's none of that when you're just a teenager who's had a crush on a boy, doesn't know how to get his attention, so now you sleep with him. So talking about self-esteem, a yeah. um, question pops into my head that I've been wanting to ask, wanting yeah. to ask you. Obviously, we've gone on to OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. We, we've spoken about uh, sugar babies. Um, I actually really want to ask you yeah. something that a lot of girls use, even I've used and uh-huh. I've been addicted to, uh, <laughs> face up. Yeah, and filters in general. Filters yeah. in general and face up and face tune. What is the dark side of using those apps? can't have any good consequences I'll be honest because I remember a time when there wasn't any filters I use filters I, I love a filter I do love it um, <laughs> I know so this is no judgment or anything like that yeah I use them yeah. but I just want to know but I remember the first time Snapchat came out with filters and stuff and I remember how ridiculous it was it was like a dog or that, like no, a was was like, oh the, my god the, the flowers. Uh, flowers and dogs and I don't know puppies coming out of your head and all that stuff but what it did to you is it showed you a version of your face if you were prettier it's like shows you, oh, if I just lost a bit of weight here, if I just you slim, my, had a slimmer nose, if I had like bigger lips, this is what I would look like. Oh my God, perfect. Let me go get that. So it's a form of consumerism. It's a form of implanting an ad- idea and a desire to go and get uh, cosmetics because women consume cosmetics and cosmetics is a huge, huge industry. So I think it is uh, geared towards, and uh, you know, uh, uh, as people say, like uh, girls are starting to look the same now and so on and so forth. And I understand that because it, we're all using the same filters. Yeah, because mm. you know, like, uh, and one of the guys on my team will say this, he, he, he will take professional photos of me mm-hmm. and he'll edit them mm-hmm. and then I'll put face up on them. <laughs> and he's like, but you look better. I said this, you look <laughs> even better in person. Thank you very yeah, much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you so yeah. much. Um, so do you. Yeah, yeah I'll obsessed. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and he was like, "You look really edited." Yeah. And I'm like, "Do I?" And he's like, "And I can't even see it yeah, when yeah, I do. Really? I'll send it to a guy, and I'll be like, oh, what's this that?'" Nice. And he's like, "Oh, that's so edited." I'm like, "That looks so natural to me." I look like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and also it doesn't help. Like I remember when I was young and stuff, um, there was no such thing. Like you would have like a, a, a simple phone, so there was no such thing as posting on Instagram and stuff. So if you took a bad picture, you took a bad picture, you wouldn't care. But now that picture has to go somewhere. It has to yeah, yeah. present to the world with it. And if it's not perfect, you you feel insecure. Whereas before, a picture would be nothing. Thing, yeah so I think the pressure where it's going also adds to that and just the also uh, pressure of the fact that you know, uh, it's so readily available the Instagram generation is really really uh, it's really toxic it is yeah, toxic yeah. and I'm part of it because I am part of uh, Instagram as well so yeah. I'm not saying this in a judgmental way I'm saying it from an experienced way it is very toxic um, but I just this is why I'm so big on education when like, uh, praise be to God, and this is not me trying to say, but when people say nice comments about appearance and stuff like that, it goes like this to me. I, I don't care for it. But, but because I built something else that I'm proud of, yeah. which is my brain. Mm-hmm. And as a result, I'm not dependent. And even when they say insults about my looks, it doesn't really bother me. You, you know what? I was just saying that yeah. the other day to my partner. I was like, you know, it doesn't. I don't need to be the most stunning, but you know, person in the room. I don't need to be the most beautiful because for yeah. me, it's, it's about else. my work. Yeah. It's about everything else that and I that's do. That's one of the things that I why I don't find Dubai difficult at all. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of people be like, oh, there's so many pretty girls, so many this. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I I've worked on something beyond my looks. I yeah. don't compare myself on people on looks. I don't compare myself at all because I know what I have. Praise all praise be to God, is uh, me. Is my author like is my education? It's my one way of speaking and so also my personality and stuff so I mean the thing is people only see the educated side online but that's like the even that I don't really rate that about myself if you know me as a person I'm like quite fun and I'm a good friend and all these things so even my friends didn't even know I had all this knowledge because I that's not why they attach to me so because I feel like I've got such a multifaceted personality um, the looks part of stuff, it's, it doesn't feel like a real compliment. It goes over my head. But if yeah. you say something that is more uh, linked to something that's unique about me, that's when I feel flattered. And I think if more women worked on those things, they would feel less pressure to be the prettiest girl in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even like sometimes I'll get a comment 
um, maybe about my looks or they'll say, oh, Miss Hamida or somewhere. Yeah. That, like, and it's, it's great. Like, I really appreciate yeah. it. But when someone compliments my work, yeah, like something that I've spent hours yeah. doing, I will take that compliment and I will just cherish it yeah. so much because it's such a big deal for yeah. me as opposed to like... And I don't really like... I'm really bad with compliments. I really don't... I, I had to put a post out on Instagram once and I was like, please don't, guys, I really appreciate it, but don't give me compliments. I just don't like it. It doesn't sit well with me. I don't know why. It's probably my own like... Maybe I need to analyze where that comes from. But yeah, that's why I would just say that the filter generation in this generation, which I'm I'm not uh, uh, avoiding myself, I'm, I'm guilty of myself, but the focus on appearance comes when you don't focus on other aspects of your being. And then you, what the, uh, the bad thing about focusing on your appearance is the only thing we can guarantee will go. Everything else will only develop. But your looks is the only thing I can guarantee you will go. Yeah, so we'll why go. focus on that? Focus on the things that are going to live forever. And mm -hmm. that is your mentality, it's your conduct, it's your treatment of others, so on and so forth. So those are things. If Once you work on those, God willing, you'll be less focused on being the prettiest girl or looking a certain way, inshallah.